As I'm working here, I just remembered um, one of the tricks that I used before and that uh, I should show you now is that this layer with the uh, original line work on it, since its uh, opacity is set down, I can put it on top of everything else so that I can still see the lines on top of my filled objects. And with that layer locked, I don't have to worry about it. And also, when I'm working inside here, once I have a group established, a clipping mask established, I can double click the clipping mask to work in isolation mode. And now all I have to do is draw new curves and they're already clipped within the clipping mask. So for example, to draw this shape down here on the heel, I can just draw the line that I want, fill it in, whatever color I want, move to back with uh, Apple Shift left bracket, and there we go. So I'm just going to keep doing that, drawing more shapes using the pen tool. Okay, now it's time to add in some of the laces. I've put in all these individual shapes and they're all overlapping. You can see them. I'm in isolation mode still and you can see that each of these shapes, they're just in order here just to, so that they're on top of each other. And now uh, to see where my... whoops, there we go. To see where my laces need to go, I'm going to have to exit isolation mode. I'll use my ellipse tool and draw an eyelet for my shoe. Draw the hole for the eyelet. And use the pathfinder right here to subtract the front object from the back one, just like so. And then I can duplicate those right along this edge. I can take those. Oh, and just actually drag them into my group so I can edit them from within the group. Now if I double click in my group to go to isolation mode, I can see a little better. And I could start filling in the actual laces themselves. So uh, but it'll help me actually to see if I exit isolation mode helps me to see where these laces are, so once again I'm just going to have to work out here. Outside of isolation mode, and then drag the objects back into isolation. So if I drag them in like that, there we go. So now if we look, I've got one lace and I want it to be behind, you know, hidden on this side of the uh, eyelet there. So the way I'm going to do that, you know what, I don't care that much. I could try to be really precise about this and take a bunch of extra time making it perfect, but instead I'm just going to use my pathfinder and subtract and I can adjust this however I want to. There we go. One lace in one eyelet. Okay, let's do the rest of these laces. Okay, so I've added uh, all my laces in to my group. I'm going to select the clipping path in the group and get rid of its stroke. So let's set the stroke to nothing so that it's uh, just a nice clean path. Make sure we're not in isolation mode. And then I'm going to add the little drop shadow underneath it just for fun. So let's add a uh, big circle out here. I'll make that circle white to start with. And then um, 
I'm going to add a create gradient mesh right here. And I want to make sure that it has four rows and four columns. Okay. And I'm going to set the middle point here. I'll select that middle point with the open arrow tool and then set it to black. Then I'll select these points on either side of it and set these to a very light gray. Okay. Now I can squish this down real small. Move it to the back. I'm going to make two of them. Duplicate it. I'm going to take those two and set them both with my transparency palette, which is right here. I'll set them both to multiply mode. There we go. I'll just take them both and move them on up until they look right. I'm using the up arrow on the keyboard to just nudge those into place right up under my shoe. All right. So now I have a basic outline of my shoe. If I hide these outlines, there you go. You can see I've got some of the, the basic art in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing for the top view, and then we'll come back.